This video is to demonstrate the preparation and procedure to access an implanted port or port cath and administer a flush to assess device patency using a surgical aseptic non-touch technique. Implanted ports should be flushed at least monthly when not in regular use. A surgical ANTT approach is commonly used when accessing a port cath there is an ANTT guideline available on the NHS GGC clinical guideline platform. The guideline is useful as it contains advice surrounding the different scenarios or situations where you might use either a standard or a surgical ANTT approach. ANTT is also incorporated into each procedural template within the NHS GGC Vascular Access Devices Care and Maintenance Guideline. This guideline is also available on the clinical guideline platform. Throughout the procedure, you will be expected to follow appropriate infection control precautions with regards to performing essential hand hygiene and wearing necessary PPE. Before commencing the procedure, you should ask the patient how their portacath site is feeling and observe it for any signs of swelling, redness, pain and irritation around the site. If there are any concerns, then you should escalate this appropriately immediately. If possible, you should sit the patient at a 45 degree angle for ease of accessing the port cath Some patients who have needle phobias may require topical anaesthetic applied over the site prior to accessing the port. If so, you should apply the topical anaesthetic, cover this with a semi-permeable adhesive dressing and leave for the recommended time for the anaesthetic to take effect. You should then remove the dressing and any leftover topical anaesthetic immediately prior to preparing the site for access. Perform hand hygiene and put on PPE. The first thing that you need to do is decontaminate the surface area that you will be using. We are using a detergent wipe here to do this. You will see that a silver trolley is being used here but any surface that can be decontaminated appropriately can be utilised. Remove PPE, perform hand hygiene and put on new PPE. The next step is to get the equipment that you need ready. You will need to prepare a critical aseptic field and a sterile dressing pack may be used to do this. Open the dressing pack and discard the outer packaging. Open the inner packaging that is wrapped around the dressing pack contents using an aseptic, non-touch technique. Take care to only touch the outside of this packaging and not contaminate the inner side of the packaging as this is sterile. The sterile inner side of the dressing pack packaging now becomes a critical aseptic field. You should now open the rest of the equipment you will need using an aseptic, non-touch technique. Carefully peel open the packaging of each item and gently drop it onto the critical aseptic field. You will need two lure lock syringes that are at least 10 ml in size. It's crucial that the syringes are at least 10 ml in size, as any syringe smaller than 10 ml will exert too high a pressure through the device and risk the device fracturing. This could put the patient at risk of infiltration or extravasation. You might need to use a syringe that is larger than 10 ml when flushing the device, depending on the volume of flush to be administered. You will also need a blunt filter needle, which can be recognised by the red plastic sheath and the pink needle hub. An alternative would be to use a blue 23 gauge or green 21 gauge hypodermic safety needle. You will need one wipe and one wand containing 2% chlorhexidine and 70% isopropyl alcohol. It's fundamental that you use these as it is the most effective solution at getting rid of any extrinsic microorganisms that might lead to bloodstream infection. You will need an appropriately sized gripper needle or the specific size of needle specifies to be used if indicated in the patient's port care plan. You will also need a needle-free access device to attach to the gripper needle prior to use. A needle-free access device is required to reduce the risk of needle stick injuries and provides a flat surface that can be thoroughly decontaminated prior to accessing the device. 
reducing the risk of catheter-related bloodstream infections. You will need a semi-permeable transparent dressing. These dressings are waterproof and minimise moisture build-up, both of which contribute to reducing the risk of infection. The transparent section of the dressing allows visibility of the site to monitor for signs of infection. You will also need a pair of appropriately sized sterile gloves. Finally, you will need an ampule of 0.9% sodium chloride. The solution and expiry date need to be checked. Place the ampule to the side as opposed to placing it onto the critical aseptic field. Current guidance for flushing vascular access devices is that we use at least double the capacity of the device lumen. So you might need to use a larger volume of flush solution depending on the device that you're using. Paediatrics and neonatal services may need to consider a smaller flush volume. You should now remove your gloves, perform hand hygiene and put on sterile gloves as they are required for this part of the procedure. To do this, open out the sterile glove packaging using an aseptic non-touch technique. Again, being careful to only touch the outside of the packaging while doing this. Pick up the edges of the gloves and ease them onto your hands, doing one hand first and then the other. You should not touch the outer surface of the gloves with your hands when you are putting the gloves on. You can now rearrange the equipment on the critical sterile field ready for use. Connect the blunt filter needle to one of the syringes. At this stage in the procedure, you will need another colleague to assist you briefly. Your colleague should use a second wipe containing 2% clohexidine and 70% isopropyl alcohol to decontaminate the neck of the flush ampule. They should do this for 30 seconds and then allow the solution to dry naturally. This also takes about 30 seconds. They should then open the ampule and present it to you to allow you to draw up the flush solution. Draw up the full flush volume into the syringe, ensuring that any air entrained into the syringe when drawing up the flush solution is then expelled. Remove the needle from the syringe and discard it straight into the sharps bin. You can now replace the syringe onto the critical aseptic field and prepare the gripper needle for use. Gently unwrap the gripper needle and attach the hub of the syringe to the needle hub. Prime the needle extension tubing with the flush solution. This is an important step in the process as the tubing is filled with air before it is primed and it is important that we do not introduce any air into the patient's circulatory system. Apply the clamp on the gripper needle and remove the syringe. Connect the needle-free access device to the hub of the gripper needle. Place the sterile drape contained within the dressing pack just below the portacath site. Using the wand that contains 2% clohexidine and 70% isopropyl alcohol, tilt the wand in a downwards direction and gently pinch the wand wings until you hear a crack and allow the solution to saturate the wand sponge. Cleanse the area directly over and surrounding the port site with the wand and using a lattice pattern. Do this for 30 seconds and allow the solution to dry fully. The used wand should now be disposed of immediately into a sharp spin as it contains a glass vial inside. You now need to palpate the port site, feeling for the outside of the portacath, which will either have raised dots in the shape of a triangle or a hard plastic edge in a circular shape. Once you have located the outside of the port, it is then easier to locate the middle of the port, which is the area that the gripper needle is inserted into. Palpate the middle of the port, feeling for the spongy area, which will be the insertion site for the gripper needle. Once you have located the appropriate access point in the port, take hold of the gripper needle securely in your dominant hand by holding it at the textured handle or wings, depending on what type of gripper needle is utilised in your clinical area, and remove the plastic sheath covering the needle. With your non-dominant hand, secure the port between your finger and thumb without touching the skin directly over the port. To insert the gripper needle, hold it directly above the port site at a 90 degree angle to the port, 
and confidently push the needle through the skin and port septum until the base of the port septum is felt with the needle. This is often described as a tinny sound. It is important not to be hesitant or tentative when doing this part of the procedure as the gripper needle will not penetrate the port septum properly. Once you are confident about the position of the gripper needle, attach the empty 10ml syringe to the needle free connector. Undo the clamp and slowly withdraw 3 to 5 ml of blood. The return of blood confirms that the portacath is still situated in the appropriate vein and removes any residual lock solution previously used. Reapply the clamp, remove the syringe and keep the needle free access device secured with your hand, being careful not to contaminate the flat end by touching it. Immediately attach the syringe with 0.9% sodium chloride flush that you prepared earlier. Undo the clamp and administer the flush using a pulsatile push-pause technique to create a turbulent flow. The turbulent flow removes any debris from the lumen of the device. During administration of the final ml of flush, the clamp should be applied while you continue to push down on the plunger at the same time. This creates positive pressure. This last part of the flush technique, clamping the device under positive pressure, is to prevent reflux of blood into the tip of the vascular access device that could then coagulate and block the device. The portacath site should be observed for signs of resistance, swelling, infiltration, stinging or redness while the flush is being administered. If any of these are noted, this should be escalated appropriately immediately. It is important that if the extension tubing on the gripper needle still has any visible blood in it following flush administration, that the flush process is repeated until the tubing is clear. If there is any residual blood present on the needle-free access device, you should use another wipe containing 2% chlorhexidine and 70% isopropyl alcohol to clean this thoroughly. If the gripper needle is to be left in situ, secure it in place using the transparent, semi-permeable dressing. If the needle is to remain in place for over 24 hours, then a chlorhexidine impregnated dressing must also be used around the needle insertion site and underneath the transparent dressing. In addition, if the needle is to remain in place for use at a later stage, then the device must be locked with an appropriate volume and concentration of heparin sodium. Following completion of the procedure, you can dispose all used equipment into the clinical waste, remove your PPE and perform hand hygiene. The procedure should then be documented. To summarise, this video demonstrated a surgical ANTT approach to access an implanted port and administer a flush to assess device patency.